fine wherever you are. My name is Teacher Ibrahim. Today we are going to look at uh, the light microscope and it's here with me. I hope you are able to see it very clearly wherever you are. Yeah, that view is good. Let's go. Let's do it now. The, eye, uh, the light microscope comprises of various areas as you can see. Each part has its role to play during magnification of specimens. It has this part here which is called the eyepiece lens. As you can see, the eyepiece lens comprises of some lenses in it and it has been indicated the, uh, the number of times it will be able to magnify the specimen. The function of the eyepiece lens is to magnify the specimen. The lenses that I told you that are in there magnifies the specimen, hence it will be viewed as a large image. It also contains another one here, which is referred to as the body tube. I think you're also able to see the body tube, the body tube, this white part here. The body tube comprises of uh, some regions which uh, enable it to hold on to the objective lenses. I think you are able to see that as well. And I'm going to use the course adjustment knob to move the body tube up and down. I think you are able to see how the body tube moves up and down. Here is the body tube. Let me just remove it. Let me just remove it. Mm -hmm. I hope you are able to see what I've just done. The body tube has an important function of holding the eyepiece and the, uh, and the revolving nose piece into position. This is the revolving nose piece and whatever I'm holding is the body tube. We also have another part just beneath here. Let me return the body tube first. Mm -hmm. The body tube, let me just put it back to its position before we start looking at something else. I have said that we also have the revolving nose piece down here, as you can see. The function of revolving nose piece is to enable selection of different objective lenses that you need to use. And therefore, we can also say that the revolving nose piece holds the obje objective lenses into position. We have three objective lenses, as you can see. And the number of times the objective lens is magnifying the specimen has been indicating on the lenses. I think you are able to see this. If you are keen enough, this one has been written 5 over one, uh, 0 0.10. I think you can see that. This other one has been written 10, meaning it magnifies the specimen 10 times. Then we have the other one here which is indicated down here, 45, meaning it magnifies the specimen 10 times. We also uh, need to know how are the functions that the objective lenses perform in the microscope. The objective lenses can just be removed very simple, the way I've just done. Here it is, you can see I'm holding the objective lens, which is times 45, that is power 45, that's how many times it is magnifying the specimen. It has got the lens here, I think you are able to see that lens as well. Mm -hmm. This is the objective lens, let me return it back to its position. The function of the objective lens is to magnify the specimen. It performs the same role as the eyepiece, the only difference is that for the case of the eyepiece, it uh, for the case of the eyepiece, it is located on the upper part while the uh, objective lenses are located on the lower side. We also have another part here which is referred to as the stage. I also believe that you are able to see the stage, this black part here. And the function of the stage is, uh, it is the flat platform where the specimen under review is placed. If I were to view a specimen on this uh, microscope slide that I'm holding on my hand, I have to place it onto the stage. And after that, I will hold it using these clips. So the function of the clips are to hold the microscope slide into position, after which I now select one of the 
objective lenses that I want to use, then it's good to go. I can just go ahead and view it. We move to another part whereby we can look at these two knobs here. I think you can see them. The bigger one, which is found on the upper side, is referred to as the course adjustment knob. Function of the course adjustment knob is to move the body tube into longer distances to bring the image into focus. The body tube moves the the body tube is moved by the course adjustment knob into longer distances, hence bringing the image into focus. Once you have obtained the focus, that is, you are able to see the specimen uh, just, be, uh, just on the stage, you will be able to use these body, t uh, these, uh, I call them the course adjustment knob, to move the body tube up and down in longer distances so as to obtain that focus of the specimen. Then after that, you can now use the fine adjustment knob. Function of the fine adjustment knob is to move the body tube into shorter distances to bring the image into sharp focus. There is some bit of variation between the roles that they play. The course adjustment knob moves it in longer distances and there is just a general focus. Then we have these ones here that I've called the fine adjustment knob, these ones here, that moves it for shorter distances and they bring the image into a sharp focus. We also have this other part here that we refer to as the limb or the arm. Function of the arm is to hold the body tube and the stage into position. It is also held when the microscope is being moved from one point to the other. Therefore, during the times when I'm transporting the microscope from one point to the other, one hand holds onto the base while the other one holds onto the limb. There we go. We also have another part here which is referred to as the mirror. I think you're able to see the mirror. Function of the mirror is to reflect light to the stage. This reflection is done through the condenser. I think you are able to see that. When I do that, I will be able to have a bright field of view. That is the part where I'll now be looking at the, Im uh, the image through the eyepiece lens. We also have another part down here. Let me just sl uh, slant the microscope a little bit. We have the part which is referred to as the diaphragm. Let me remove the diaphragm so that we can just have a look at it first. Hey, I'm removing the diaphragm so that we can just have a look at the diaphragm. There we go. This is the diaphragm. The diaphragm is an aperture which is used to regulate the amount of light passing through to the stage. I hope you are able to see that. Uh -huh. You can just zoom in it so that we can see how the diaphragm looks like. The diaphragm can be closed or can be opened. When there is too much bright light, yet we don't need a lot of light, then we can close the diaphragm and leave a very small opening which will allow only small amount of light to pass through. If there is uh, some bit of darkness, there is no enough light, then the diaphragm can be fully opened so as to allow enough light to pass through to the condenser. We also have the condenser down here. I hope you will be able to see it very clearly. The condenser is found inside here. It comprises of some lenses which are capable inside here. Yes, it, it comprises of some lenses which are capable of which are capable of concentrating light into a strong beam. Upon light being reflected from the mirror, then it goes to the condenser whereby it will now be condensed into, it will be concentrated into a strong beam and therefore enabling enough light to, be, to, uh, to reach the stage, hence simple viewing of the, of the specimen under review. Let me just return the condenser so that we can move on to something else. Let me just return the condenser. There we go. We have this part here, which is referred to as the base. 
The function of the base is to provide firm support to the microscope. As you can see, it is the part which I can also hold when I'm transporting the microscope, just the way I told you that you need to transport the microscope using both hands. Uh -huh. The last part here is referred to as the hinge screw. Hinge screw is present in some of the is in some of the microscopes and there are some which may not be having the hinge screw. Function of the hinge screw is to enable tilting the angle to which the viewer looks through the eyepiece. It could have been impossible for me to view this uh, specimen down here when the microscope is straight. Therefore, by use of the hinge screw, I can easily tilt the microscope and be able to view just the way I'm doing right now. Uh, that marks the end of this uh, lesson. That is lesson one under the parts of the light microscope. I hope that you have been able to remember different parts of the microscope that I've just explained together with their functions. And at, at this moment, I would like now to get to another second topic whereby I'm going to explain to you how the microscope is being used up. So just stay with me and don't forget to subscribe. There we go. Thank you so much.